the rug was pulled out from underneath her. She didn't feel confident. She didn't know if she could make it. Yet she rose like the phoenix, leading herself and her family into a new beginning. And you can too. Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show Lady Boss knows what women want. To be free to speak their voice, live in financial freedom, and build businesses that radiate wealth, leaving legacies we can be proud of. Join Cornelia, Dana, and Chris the first and fourth Friday every month as they raise the roof to inspire confidence in all women. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm so excited for today's show because I'm here with my co-host, Miss Chrissy D. Hi, Chris. Hello, everybody. Yay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How is the voice, Carter? Are we able to hear her okay? Uh, it's a little light, so Chrissy, if you can move in a little bit closer. Try to match Cornelia if you can and how close she is. But yeah. we can work with it. Yeah, wonderful. Would be great even to have a little bit closer because we want to make sure that we can hear you well for all those for all those people out there that um, are tuning into our show. We've got an incredible show for you today because we are uh, talking about the pink files today. That's what Miss Chrissy D is here to tell us about. And it's all about educating, empowering women to make sure that they are set if something was to happen in their life, uh, as far as you know, their spouse is concerned, if they're married, or even, even women that are not married, I think would be great to have the pink files as well. Miss Chrissy D, why don't you give us a back, um, let's recap what you know the first show was about and tell us a little bit your story give us a recap and tell us about how you you came to this place today and what what your story is as far as the the files that you created but give us a little backstory on on where you were before okay um i was married living a very normal life so I thought, and uh, we were running some businesses and looking after kids and just living that life. And it's a couple of days before Christmas. I've set the table for Christmas dinner, running my son out to basketball. And when I get home, my husband is in the driveway, facing outward with the door open, asked my son to hop in and drove down the drive, drove out down the street, gone. I walked in my house and it was an absolute shock. It went from Christmas dinner to my furniture was gone. Uh, lots of things were gone. I ran upstairs, my son's passport was gone. Money was gone, clothes was gone. I had no idea that this was gonna happen or what to do. So it just sent me in an absolute um, whirlwind of trauma and I called a friend to come over and my neighbors came over and said there was locksmiths there that afternoon changing the locks and there was trucks there loading up my stuff and taking it away and I needed to call the police and I needed to get a lawyer well it's two days before Christmas there's no lawyer's office is open except my ex-husband's <laughs> So it just turned my world upside down and I was not prepared for it at all. So basically, um, I was just on a Facebook live before I came onto the show here and I was um, letting the audience know that you had helped your husband, you and your husband build an empire together because you all lived in a well-to-do neighborhood. You helped, you know, you guys were business people, entrepreneurs. You helped your husband husband build an empire. And overnight, the rug was pulled out from underneath you and everything was taken away and you had no knowledge of it. Correct. My, my bank accounts were empty. My credit cards were racked up. Um, I found out shortly after because within days, I was getting served all these legal papers. So I had to go and get a lawyer and I thought I would use maybe some equity from the house. 
to only find out that his lawyer already had a mortgage on my house without my permission and without my knowledge. Not a lien, an actual mortgage. And he had attached it to the whole thing. Now I had added my husband's name to my credit cards and bank account and house and everything. So they could have legally attached it to half, which women need to know about. But this lawyer had uh, written it in a way that it attached it to the whole thing and it tied up the whole equity and I could not get any help whatsoever. And now I'm being bombarded with legal papers. Um, I, got, I, I have one here. I actually have a whole floor of all this legal work, but this one is dated January the 3rd. He left on the 23rd before Christmas. By January 3rd, I'd already had three affidavits to respond to. This one's uh, about 30 pages of absolute legal documentation that I now have to figure out. I'd had three of these in just over a week, over Christmas with no lawyer and no way to respond. This one actually says that I got it on the third by email, not even being served. So I don't even know I got it. And I had to respond by noon that day and be in court the next day. I didn't even know. You know, this is so, this is just so incredible because we've talked about it on the previous shows. For those of you that are listening to this for the first time, if you want to hear the full show that, that Miss Chrissy D and I did, you can go to my YouTube channel at Cornelia Stephanie. And there's, um, there's the first show, how I went from married life to the backseat of my car. There's, there's one and two, and then today's the third show. And because each one was leading up to a progression. And in the first show, we talked a lot about how, you know, the emotional component behind everything that Chris was going through at the time, like all the things that she was feeling, you know, with her children and her husband. The thing about it is, is that at the time you felt like you didn't know your husband was doing this and you felt like your marriage was okay. Like you guys had problems just like any other marriage, but nothing like out of the ordinary. So first of all, that was the piece. And then on top of it, now you had to deal with all of these legal issues that were completely shocking. And you had no idea that this was all being, you know, used against you and that now you had to show up in court. And then the other thing was that, um, that, you know, it was the holidays and during that time, and now you really had to be on your game and you really didn't know the thing that floors me, that really just floors me. It was your house. It was your credit cards. It was all of these things. This was all your, your property. Everything was yours. And then literally overnight it was, um, you know, turned against you. And that is the story that we're telling other women out there to the world so that this could happen to anybody. And you are wanting to alert women that if it, if something like this does happen to you, be prepared. And, and women need to realize, I mean, we all think the same way. It's not going to happen to me. I hear that so often. When I was pulling out all this paperwork that unfortunately you can't see, um, I found these old cards and it's interesting. Like all these old like love letters and stuff. And, and I'm reading this stuff here that says, I will continue to love you with every ounce of my heart till I die. How do you go from that to I hope your little money makes you happy as you die a lonely death with your mother. How does it go from that to that? Wow. Yeah, that's and, it's hard. And, and I don't even care what happens in your marriage or your relationship. If things go sideways and, and then, then so be it. But be a human being and let's work through it, decide what we're going to do part our ways, figure out what we're going to do and move on. You don't strategically take somebody out and purposely leave them for dead with nothing. But you know what? Um, we, you and I have talked about this before. There's other women who, when, when they're listening to your story, they're like going, that happened to my mom. I, 
I, what if something like that was to happen to me? And you have stories, don't you? Um, right now that you can tell of women that are um, experiencing uh, certain things. Can you tell us about some of those stories? Yeah, you know, I've talked to quite a few women that are coming to me now and they're saying things like, I don't have any of my stuff in place because I didn't have to. I've been married for so long. We've built everything together. And now my husband's got dementia is what one lady told me. And now she is, uh, he's saying to her, I don't think I'm going to leave my half of our stuff with you. I think I'm going to give it away. And she's like, what? She's retired. If half of everything she's worked for now gets taken away, she's going to have to sell her house or lose it and everything that she's worked for. And it's going to change her whole life because of what her husband's going through. I have another woman who they were, they both worked. They were both getting ready to retire. They had everything set. They were going to go traveling. Unfortunately, he got cancer and he ended up with a brain tumor and it was pushing on certain parts of his brain. And he absolutely now hated this woman. Absolutely screaming and yelling and swearing at this woman that he's been married to and has children with and was getting ready to retire with. So my story is very extreme, but there's a lot of things that can happen out there just because you don't think your husband will do what my husband did. Um, there's lots of things that can happen. I've got single friends that are living with uh, men and they're building a business together. Now, what happens if he decides that he doesn't want to be with her anymore? This was his business. Having said that, when this person came in, she's now really growing that business and helping it take off. She's put years into this. Now what happens? Yeah, I recently, I understand that. I recently met, met a woman also that is, um, you know, in a relationship that she's been invested in for like the last um, years, you know, like two to five years, anywhere between there. And um, that if something was to happen to him, she wouldn't know what to do, meaning that nothing is organized, nothing is there. And it always reminds me of, yeah, this is exactly, you're spot on, Chris, with what you're doing with educating women and helping women to make sure that they have their files together, that they're organized, because we need to have these conversations. And it's with this level of courage of you coming forward and saying, what happened to you? Because we know your story was extreme and that's not gonna happen to everybody. However, we do know the conditioning from our past where women have given their power away and still are. And especially like, I wanna say it's, it's, it's the age of our age group, uh, that, that our age group. And then there's the millennials. There are anywhere between the ages of, I want to say, 18 to 35 that are also not looking at this. And also they're raising children. So it's important that we have foundations that are, that are strong and that we leave legacies that we're proud of. And what you're doing with, what, you know, with the pink files and what you're going to talk about today is helping women so that they don't, they don't get caught. And it's like with anybody, it doesn't have to be in an extreme story like yours, but any, everybody should have these files that we're going to talk about in a little while about what they are. So how did you get through all the paperwork that you had to deal with. I mean, how did you get through it? You know, it, it's um, one step at a time, one breath at a time. It is absolutely overwhelming. And like on my floor right here, I literally have thousands and thousands of pages of legal paperwork. So when you're now up against a whole team of lawyers, assistants, runners for court, all of that. You have to take every piece of paper at a time. You have to read it and you have to try and understand it while you're in the middle of trauma. And it is, um, it's too hard. One of the things that women need to understand is you, as much as we don't like lawyers, 
If you find yourself in a legal situation, you need to have money to take care of yourself because a lot can happen in the legal system. It is not what we think. It just isn't. And if you're up against a lawyer that knows how to play the system and doesn't have to follow the law, because I've said this before, what I've learned is the law is a suggestion for the judge, but they can pretty much make up how they want to do it. And I've given examples of this before. It happened to me over and over and over again, where I followed the law, I figured it out, and then I get to court and that's not what's happening because he didn't follow the law, but the judge is going to allow it. You absolutely need to have money put away so that you're on the same playing field. I actually believe that when people are going through this, it should be matched. If the husband has $100,000 to deal with court, then the woman should have that as well. How can it be that all of a sudden you've got $200,000 and you don't even have food? Because that's what happened to you. That yeah. is what happened to you. Yes. That is what happened to you. And the law really wasn't on your side. And that's what that's the reason of what you're saying is ladies, protect yourself, no matter what the situation is protect yourself, make sure that, because again, you and I talked about this before, is that it would have been nice had you had the money to be, be okay. And it would have been nice because I mean, what, what you went through that in itself is losing your marriage is enough to um, keep you busy for a while because now your job is to grieve and to process the loss of your marriage and not have to try to read contracts and figure things out about how you were schemed and scammed by a person that has been telling you they love you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And try and figure that out when you're going through all of that mess. It, you can't even get over that, I can't believe this just happened. Right. That's the first part that absolutely takes you out. And you're also dealing with everything else. Don't forget, I've been I've been given these three times in just over a week. That's hundreds of legal pages that I had to figure out that I had to be able to afford to even register in court. Funny, I, I went to court one day and one of the lawyers in the hall said, you can fill out a piece of paper, go stand in front of a judge and they'll waive all the fees you always have to pay. So... I go figure this out off to the law library. I get this form stamped. I go into this courtroom and there's all these people standing around because this judge is going to see like 10 cases that day. So now you have to stand up in front of absolutely everybody and air your dirty laundry while they're listening. And it's just the most horrible feeling. So I asked the judge to waive the fees and he asked why. And I explained it to him and he said, who's his lawyer? So I told him, and he goes like this. He goes, give me those papers. I'll sign them. Wow. So, yeah. So the lawyer had quite a reputation, and the judge knew I was in big trouble. Yeah. Well, so, you know what? I mean, the, when you said the feeling, you know, it's, again, the shame that you must have felt. So ashamed. So ashamed that you, that you have to do this, like airing your dirty laundry, fighting for your life you know, not, not being able to, to understand, I mean, all these legal things, it's hard to understand some of the language and being able to understand that. And all not, of the language, it's, all it's, of the language. Hard. And it's not English. So I want to tell the audience again. Now, this has been six years ago. Is that right? Miss Chrissy D? Yeah, almost seven years. So almost seven years. Are you still going to court? Uh, haven't been to court this year so far. <laughs> so, so far, so good, but you never know. Yeah, but no, you're done. I, I, I'd say call it and, and command your energy. You're done. This is a done deal. It's over. It's done. You're, you're no more court. And basically, you've rebuilt your life. Is that right? Yes, I have. Absolutely. That's that's what we want to focus on and that's what we want to celebrate is that you have rebuilt your life and yeah it's been almost seven years and um now you are you know you've had a lot of uh, 
post-traumatic stress. I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking, you know what? There's so many of us that have had to, that have post-traumatic stress. <laughs> I mean, so many of us to really be able to, to deal with, um, you know, some of the things that we've had to deal with, our conditioning from the past, all the, all the different things, events happen. And so many of us had to overcome post-traumatic stress. But you're in a place now where you are, um, healed and recovered from this you you know like i said on facebook live today you are not carrying any um bad feelings towards your ex-husband you've forgiven him you've moved on and now you have created um a kit and that's what we want to celebrate and tell the ladies about you've created a kit and you've moved on with your life and now your part is to empower women inspire women to make sure that that their 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 life is handled that they are good at when anything could happen in the moment at the blink of an eye that they know where their files are absolutely and again even if you don't think something like this would happen to you think about all the other reasons as to why you need to have everything that's important to you in one easy package no matter what a friend of mine was saying this morning, she'd heard about a, an earthquake. People have these disasters. Who in the middle of their house burning down or an earthquake or something going on is like, you know, start running around and collecting everything. You need to be able to pick up everything that's yours in one little thing and be away with it to protect yourself. So the, the files that I've created, the pink files, pink stands for power and knowledge. So everything that you everything that's important to you from your id to everything that you've worked for needs to be in this file everything that was yours before everything that was yours after we need to start thinking about if something happens how am i going to be protected we don't want to be 50 and 60 years old and all of a sudden having to go to work every day just to keep a roof over our heads We've worked all of this time. We need to value what we've done and know our worth and know that we're worthy of being looked after and being safe and living without the stress and the fear. Now, is that file that is behind you, is that, is that, a, is that a kit or is that just part of your... That's my kit right there. That's your kit. This is my kit right here. Okay. This is it. That's it. That's your kit. Right there. Okay. Cool. I like that. I like that. I like that. So that's your kit. Mm -hmm. and everything that you need is in there. And when you, um, when you go to my website, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and you can get the instructions to put your own kit together, you're going to see different files and stuff that you never thought of. And you think, oh, do I really need that? You absolutely really do need it because you never know what's going to happen. Right. So you've put a kit together that has all the files and pretty soon in a few weeks, maybe even, uh, yeah, people will be able to go and order this on your website, right? And order the, the, the files and download that. Is that right? They're going to be able, they're going to download a file and it's going to be me teaching them how to create their files and how to use them so that no matter what they've got going on in their life it will be specific to them they will be able to protect everything that they work for and right. why should they? you know here's something i hear all the time yeah Ooh, I, I feel guilty doing that i talked to one woman about it and she goes i'm already feeling guilty just thinking about it why it's your stuff why first of all first of all that i mean and here's the here's the other thing i mean when when you really look at guilt I just want to say, everybody remove guilt from your vocabulary because guilt again is a religious program that um, that we've been conditioned by to feel guilty when when we need to you know either feel pleasure, take care of ourselves, claim our power. Oh, I feel guilty if I put myself first. Oh, I feel guilty if I do this. Oh, I feel guilty. And honest to God, your body does not like feeling guilt. That's not a good feeling for your body to feel these feelings of guilt when, so just remove guilt out of your vocabulary. 
It's not, it's not a feeling that you choose to have. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And um, not to pick on men. I love men. Me too. Um, <laughs> but um, do men feel guilty that they know where the title to the house is or where um, all of their documents are? The women that I talk to that say, oh, I don't even know where that stuff is. My husband handles it. I don't think he's walking around feeling guilty that he's got all of that stuff. No, he totally doesn't feel guilty. It's a good point. That's a really good point to um, to make. You know, it's again, it's keeping the women, you know, the women, keeping them low, keeping them not in their power. And unless the women realize, wow, I've been doing this habit. It's a habit of mine that, you know, I've been doing this and that there's really no reason to do that. Because you know what I find is that I really find that men, what they're really wanting, they want women to take more power and they want women to be empowered and take charge and, and really know. Because you know what? It's really time for us not to let shit slide by. Absolutely. It's right? Yeah. Um, I, how do I, I, I just think it's really important that we do start valuing ourselves. If your partner is, um, you're feeling guilty because of it and they don't want you to have it, then you need to look at why. Because if they don't want you to have that stuff and you're not being valued for what you have brought to the table, then there's something wrong and you really need to start protecting yourself. And I think we don't because we don't want conflict. We just want the family to be happy. We want everything to work. And we always just put up with things. And all of a sudden, I, I've done that lots. I can look back at the mistakes I've made that brought some of this on and went, why did I put up with that? Because I just wanted everybody to get along. I thought we had such a great life. And I decided instead of dealing with that and being petty or small, I would look at the big picture and think that down the road, everything would work out and be fine. Instead yeah. of dealing with, ooh, that's not right. I need yeah. to fix that. It's claiming your value, claiming your worth, claiming your power, and also feeling like, you know, sometimes having these conversations that, like, no, this, did, this didn't used to work for me. I mean, this used to work for me, and it's not going to work for me now. I just need to make sure that I'm taken care of and that I'm okay. And it's not personal. It's just that it's, it's about equality, fairness, empowerment, and making sure that I'm taken care of. You have to be your own advocate, right? Uh, advocating for yourself and that's that's really important but again i'm finding that men really want women to take more take charge more and the stakes for women are high and i i say that all the time on my millionaire imprint for women show women need to take more of their um they need to they need to be able to look and go i i want to have my voice in this i want to have my say in this i want to i want to be a part of this and not not leave all that stuff up to the men Miss Chrissy D, let's let's take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. Okay. Are you an entrepreneur who's struggling to be seen? Do you know deep in your gut that if you could just be seen and get your message out, that you'd easily reach your tribe? How wonderful would it be if a fairy godmother came along, waved her magic wand, and suddenly you were more than visible. You were dazzling. Would you sign up for that? Hi, I'm Deborah Lupien, spiritual teacher and international best-selling author of Akasha Unleashed, The Missing Manual to You. I'm here with the wonderful news that such a person actually exists. Her name is Cornelia Stephanie, and she's gifted at helping entrepreneurs become dazzling. I've watched her work her magic over and over to turn invisible entrepreneurs into dazzling stars who easily attract their ideal clients and have fun doing it. Not long ago, I was the recipient of her gift. As a guest on her show, Living Heaven on Earth, not only did we have fun, but Cornelia helped me get my message out to a wider audience, which resulted in a very nice spike of traffic to my website 
and more subscribers to my list. Did I mention it was incredibly easy? Cornelia's running a veritable media empire of uplifting programs. They cover a broad range of topics and have a large appreciative audience. That's a winning combination, folks. Guess what? Those shows need guests and hosts. Imagine, after guesting on a few shows, moving up to hosting your own popular show? That is absolutely possible for you. So now you have a decision to make. Are you going to keep struggling on your own? Or are you going to sign up for some Cornelia Stephanie dazzling visibility magic? Email radio at corneliastephanie.com today. We are back and you're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. And I tell you that my fire is roaring. I'm, le I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling the fire. I'm feeling the fire. And it's like, oh, wow. You know, and because when you, you and I in the break, we were talking about um, if your husband would have known what, Miss Chrissy D, tell us. Ah, if I had created my pink files and my husband knew that I had everything organized in one easy place with proof proof that when he moved from his parents house to my house that all of the stuff that i had already had i was actually just in the middle i had sold one house and was buying another house so i had all of that money in the bank enough to almost pay for the house fully i was going to have a tiny mortgage like 150 dollars a month i was pretty sad um and instead of buying that next house after he had moved into my house, um, I realized he had a lot of debt. I paid years of his taxes off and he was losing his company. And so I put a lot of money into saving that. Um, I didn't get anything signed. I didn't have any proof because we were in love. We were gonna start building our life together. If I'd had all of that in a file that showed this is what I own. This was my money. This is how I helped you. This is the business I turned around and built so that we could make all of this money and everything I did. I think he would have had um, second thoughts and he wouldn't have been so cruel because he knew he would have known that he couldn't get away with it because I had a box that would have showed that everything that he was going to do in court wasn't true. I think it would have made a big difference. It would have made a big difference. And then, yeah, it would have totally made a dip. Probably this scenario would not have played out. First of all, because you, you, you were already empowered. You were empowered. And I think that's what this message is about. It's about empowering yourself, being, 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 acknowledging your energy input, what you're putting in, acknowledging your worth, acknowledging your value in the relationship, knowing that all the things you've done instead of, you know, giving it all away, uh, even, you know, even to the people that we love. This reminds me a little bit of um, what just flashed is that um, years ago, I, I had met a man and um, we, we were in love and he was living in another state and he was moving here to be with me. So while he was moving here to be with me, I, I thought that when he got here, that he was going to go and get his own place right away. But he didn't, he didn't get his own place right away. He moved in with me, you know, to, to, while he was going to look for a place, I guess. But the, the whole point is, is that I wasn't used to having somebody in my house. So literally, I was going to let him have my house while I went off to my mother's house and mm -hmm. stayed over there while he's at my house. When I realized, I went over to my mother's house and I realized, what? am I doing oh my god I go back and I'm like listen you gotta go I'm sorry I I, I love you I want to work with you on this but I can't give you my house you have to go this is the kind of work that women do this is the kind of things women do because we're caretakers we want to yeah. know you. we want to give we want to love we want to honor we want to help we want to support and we want to give everything away and sometimes it's at the risk of losing it all and that's it right there. We are nurturers and we do want to take care of things. And I actually love that about myself and about women. And I think that's an absolutely great quality. And I never want women to lose that. Uh, having said that, that doesn't mean we need to give our power away while we do it. 
we have to actually value the nurturing part of us that was that we have that is something that separates us and wow that is so valuable and we need to start raising our girls to realize that what they bring in the nurturing and the caring uh, and taking care of everybody is so valuable we need them to understand it right from the get-go so that when they are nurturing and taking care of they're going to be taken care of too that's the models that's the examples that we have to be to the millennials the younger women the, the, the children, to the grandchildren, the children that are being born today. Uh, this is what it's like when women are empowered and it's not, this is what it's like. Anything can happen, an earthquake can happen, uh, a flood can happen, anything can happen at any point in time, but that you are fully engaged, that you're not passive, you know, because again, uh, women have just, they haven't really, you know, fully claim their power again. I'm, I'm going to call it that again. And they're more passive and letting this slide by, letting that slide by, not wanting to ruffle the feathers or rock the boat by having this conversation and saying, hey, I really need to know this. I want to know what this is about. I want to know what that's about. And that's like, you know, not tolerating, um, not tolerating things. It's like your, your inner parent has to be really strong. Yeah, I don't know where this all came about that we don't value ourselves like that, but this needs to be a conversation and it's not going to work unless we all get on board, right? This isn't about um, just me and my story and giving me a like on Facebook. This really is about all of us coming together and teaching each other that we are valuable and we need to stand up and claim that power and again teach our girls the same thing and then let that's when that's when things are going to shift and change when we all stand up and demand it exactly when we stand up and demand it when we show this is the new model this is the new template this is how it's happening and you know it's already happening in your community right now uh tell the audience again where you're working miss chrissy d you're working with the homeless shelter right you're working at a homeless shelter um it's a, it's it's not i was working in a homeless shelter i'm actually in an office now okay uh, but yes i work with homeless people and my job is to house them after they've been homeless for a certain period of time. So I, I see women, I, I see both, but I see a lot of women come and it's not what you think. I've seen nurses. Um, I have a few teachers that have been homeless for quite a while that I'm in the process of housing. A lot of people that were self-employed and all of a sudden they get hurt and they're not covered or something happens like they were taken advantage of, like in my situation, these are people that have worked their whole lives and there's no protection for them. And now they're homeless. And along with becoming homeless comes a lot of mental health issues. Whether you had them, before, if you didn't have them before, you're going to have them when you become homeless because it absolutely takes you out. It really, really does. Um, it also brings on a lot of addiction. I've talked to a lot of people that didn't do drugs till they became homeless. And now people are walking by judging them going, oh, they're a heroin addict or they're a crack addict. Actually, she was a teacher and she got hurt and then she had to fool around with all the red tape and all the government stuff and she didn't get her proper pension and in the meantime she lost her house and now she's doing drugs because she can't stand to even be in her own skin anymore so we really need to be careful how we look at people and judge them wow that's got to be i just you know i applaud you for being in the place that you are that's why it's so important that you uh, are doing the work that you're doing that you're talking about this openly and like you said teachers and uh who else you said teachers and who else um i've had a nurse i've had some teachers i've had construction workers i've had a whole array of a whole bunch of things and you know people come to me because they know i get it mm -hmm. the first thing 
it's really hard for them to open up and sit in front of you. And I've got to ask them a whole bunch of really personal questions. And they're just looking at me with tears in their eyes. And I usually just say, hey, I am so not judging you. I've been where you've been. And oh, they go, my God. They're like, what? You've been homeless? I says, yeah, three and a half years. I slept in the back of my car. I slept on friends' floors and couches. I'm not here to judge you. This is nothing to be ashamed about. Let's figure out how to take care of you because we all deserve to have a roof over our head. Yeah, yeah. That's so tender. And oh my gosh, I mean, I'm just so glad that these people have a person like you and the, the place where you're working that they have compassionate people that are helping them that are not judging them and that life happens. And, you know, there's a lot of things that happens, which is all the more reason to protect yourself in any way that you possibly can so that um, you're just, you're just more equipped. You're just more equipped because, you know, like we said, it can change in the, in by, you know, by the turn of a dime. I really encourage women because when this happened to me I didn't know about the services that were out there so again I really encourage women I love where I work they focus on helping people that need it all the time if they're falling through the cracks we will figure out how to help them and there are societies and nonprofits and government agencies in most communities ladies I would encourage you to go out there before anything happens and just see what's out in your community so that if you do need help, you know where to go. Before. Wow. Yeah. I mean, these are all, these are all good points. These are all good points. Let's take the last break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now. And even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment and now i have the ability to help other people do the same so working with cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that i've ever made in my life it has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy so i cannot recommend working with her enough i hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. You are back and you're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I just wanna let everybody know 
that uh, wants to see some of the previous shows that I've done with Miss Chrissy D, you can go to Cornelia Stephanie YouTube channel and you can look there and you're gonna see the past shows that we've done. While you're there, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and then all the new shows that we're doing are going, you're going to be alerted on all the shows that you don't miss anything because we certainly are bringing you all this valuable, good information that 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 you can share with your family and your friends and people that um, that you want to support and help. Because we were just talking about it in the break, uh, is that this isn't just for women, but this is also for men. Because you were telling me about the story about your girlfriend that. Tell us about what, what, what your girlfriend just did. So I, I have a friend and she's, she thinks this is great. And she said she's actually got her boys started on putting something together as well so that they have all of what they need in order as they go out into the world. They've already started getting things organized. It's going to become a habit. And one of her boys needed some paperwork the other day. And lo and behold, it was right in his kit easy he didn't have to go search his room and get all upset it was already there in his kit so it, this is really is about us teaching our kids to get organized and value what they have as well it, it really is for everybody yeah it and really is for everybody so you know and and we were talking about it but if, if we're going to focus on on also making sure that the kids so you can do it together as a family project. This could be done as a family project rather than uh, making it like a big chore. It's like, hey, let's make sure that we've got our kids together, that everybody knows where everything is and empower the entire family. So we were talking, what can women do differently so that it doesn't happen to them what happened to you? And your words are? Basically, just what you said, let's make sure that we're empowering ourselves and our young girls and the kids to start doing that right off the bat. So that, and when you've got everything in one easy, safe place, all of a sudden you're going to see everything you have and go, wow, that's actually a value. I've actually done a lot. It's right there for you to see. So it is so important that, um, we start getting our kids to do that right off the bat. And it's never too late. Ladies, if you don't have it done now, it doesn't matter. Start. Let's start reprogramming ourselves to put everything in one easy spot and know that that's ours. We don't have to feel guilty. We're allowed to protect what's ours. And um, get in a week or two when the pink files get released, get on there and start building your pink files. This is there to protect you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Protect you. And guess what? If you don't ever need it, now you've got a beautiful box of memories when you're gone that your kids will see everything that you have accomplished and everything that was important to you. You know what? I see the value of this so much, not just for the kids, but like so many women right now are becoming caretakers of elderly parents. And even having a kit for the elderly parents. So it's like, you know what, Miss Chrissy D, I actually see that, you know, the pink files is, you know, one for, for the women, but then it's pink files for seniors, pink files for like chicken soup for the soul, all the different things, but ch pink files for men, pink files for kids, pink files for seniors. You know, it's like, um, so that, that, because again, it's like, you know, when, when, um, when, a, when an elderly parent, dies or passes away um, and things are not in order and the children have to deal with that or they have to deal with the files and they have to deal with first of all again we're talking about if you have to go clean the house or you have to fight the system or you have to you know figure out where the paperwork is and go through all these things then you know what it, what that's doing it's taking the energy away of what you're really supposed to be doing and what you're supposed to be doing is grieving 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 the loss grieving whatever the loss is of the relationship whatever that is because that's what you're going to be faced with because there's going to be so much emotion there when something like that happens that if you can have the files already organized that opens up the space for you to grieve and that is enough to deal with because my gosh um 
Yeah. You, there's going to be a lot of grieving. There's going to be a lot of crying. There's going to be a lot of that. So if you can have more space for that, instead of doing these, these, you know, mundane things, which are important, but it's like preventative. It's a preventative thing, right? Now, now you can celebrate the life and what they accomplished in, instead of, again, being thrown in trauma, wondering where the heck everything is and why is it such a mess? Everything's right there. So yeah, now you can celebrate instead of going through the trauma. And for seniors, for, you know, for everybody, someone's going to have to look after all of those details. So it's already there. Let's just start getting in the habit of building them and adding to it and always protecting ourselves, always protecting ourselves. Let's, let's tell everyone where they can go to your website so that they can already look at your website. And that also, um, you said that the pink, pink files are going to be released most likely in the next couple of weeks that they'll be ready, but certainly for sure, by, by the time we launch the next show, which will be four Fridays from now. So, um, we're, what's the name of your website? MissChrissyD.com. So Miss go Chrissy. and check it out. My story's there and the kit will be there and, and all of the other information. I would love for you to come and see it and send me an email. My email's on there. If you have anything you want to say, if you'd like to talk to us about your story and you've learned things that you want to add, I would love to add it to this conversation. Yeah, we want to be able to, you know, we haven't talked about this, but it would be great maybe for the next show or maybe the next show, Miss Chrissy D, you decide because uh, how you want to roll this forward. But maybe we have uh, callers call in and talk about their stories that they can call in and share and what what's happened to them. Maybe that's something that we can we can talk about future shows that people can call us up and and share. And then, you know, you can give them advice that way as well. So. And, and Empower us. Like, I bet there's a whole bunch of women out there that have learned a lot of great things that uh, they should pass on to the rest of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have just a few minutes left before the show is uh, complete today. What do you want to leave the audience with, with final um, words, Miss Chrissy D? Value yourself. Uh, know that you're worthy, start teaching your children to know the same thing and start building your pink files. It's really simple. Those three things is going to protect yourselves. And you can either, we're, we're going to try this. We're going to slowly pull this camera back and you can actually see everything that I have had to deal with all of this paperwork here. So you need to decide do you want to deal with all of this kind of stuff? Or do you want to just simply do your kit? Good. I like it. So, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and pull the camera back, pull the camera back and let us see, let us see the floor because you've got all, all the files spread out on the floor. Let's see. Wow. 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 <laughs> you are. Go ahead. All legal paperwork that got delivered to my door that I had to figure out in about a year. Wow. So, so do you want to deal with all the crap or do you want to put your pink files together? It's pretty simple, right? Yeah, let's put our pink files together and say no to the crap. Absolutely. Okay. No crap, get your pink on. Awesome, there you go. Thanks, Miss Chrissy D. And thanks to the girlfriend. Okay. See you all next time. Have a Bye. wonderful evening. Bye. Hi, my name is Janet Hickox, and I want to tell you a little story about a story and how my friend Cornelia Stephanie helped me through to the other end of that story. I have gone from the dark of a story I was telling myself that wasn't true to the light of optimism to see my way out of where I was and to where I want to go. And it all started with uh, her scheduling a session for me to help me reclaim my money or my financial empowerment. Up until that point, I had been telling the story that my business was dying, that my business was not successful anymore. And 
the more I tried to figure out what was going on, the worse I felt about it. And when I had to get ready to do the session with Cornelia, she asked me to go look at the numbers and where I was uh, through the year to date. And then also to come prepared with a number that I wanted to uh, raise my income to. Well, I was quite comfortable with that part, right? I knew where I wanted to be. Uh, what I wasn't comfortable with doing is going and looking up those numbers. But I made myself do it, even though I tried to backpedal my way out of the session. Um, she didn't know that, but I was going to try to get myself out of the session. And I looked up those numbers. And it was incredible that I discovered through that process that my business wasn't dying. In fact, I was doing 12% better than I had the year before. So I was shocked. I was shocked literally at the power of the story that I had been telling for months. But more than that, I was shocked that I had allowed myself to get there. And uh, later in that day when I had my session with Cornelia, she pointed out some very obvious things like, how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go? How are you going to get there if you don't have the goals written out, if you don't have it uh, set up so that you know where you are and where you're going to go? Totally makes sense, right? If I, and I had been in business, uh, somebody else's business as a sales manager for years, and I, I was a national sales manager. I had awards for sales management. I had business awards because of numbers. And yet when it came to doing my own business, I totally forgot all that I'd ever learned. So by the time Cornelia working with me in just one session, got me to look deeper at the numbers and where did I want to go and actually, you know, claiming where I wanted to go. Um, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope. Like you can't believe it was like, everything shifted for me. And I am so looking forward to our continued sessions to see how far I can really push myself to get where, I, where I've where i only dreamed of being, where I've never taken the dream and actually brought it into concrete existence. So thank you, Cornelia, for the work that you're doing out there. I appreciate it. And I can't wait to see where I go from here.